Hi, I'm Corey with Sugar Cookie Marketing, and today we want to go over the basics of airbrushing. We have the Sweet Pink Olive brand new airbrush that just came out, launched in February, and we want to show how we can airbrush these cookies in front of me today to give more dimension to our bakes. As you know, I love to work with royal icing and sugar cookies, so that's what we're going to be using today, but you can use airbrushing on things like buttercream, cakes, cookies, anything like that. But we're gonna go with my favorite, which is royal icing, so that's what we'll dive in today. The tools that I have today is we have the brand new airbrush system from Sweeping Golub. I haven't unboxed it yet, so we'll be doing that together. Um, you can order this additional gun with the Sweet Pink Olive Airbrush, and this is for things like metallics. Uh, metallics have a little bit thicker consistency than your normal airbrushing colors, and it will sometimes clog up the gun that comes with the machine. So we always suggest going with the bigger tip, which you can order from Sweet Pink Olive as well. Um, I have the Cookie Countess Airbrush Colors. This is Sunshine Yellow. I've bought every single one that she offers. Um, it's really easy to use and they're very um, easy to use on cookies and things like that, but there's a bunch of other types that you can order as well. I think Americolor has them um, and a couple other brands on Amazon as well. We have this Everclear. Um, if this video goes bad, I'm gonna drink it. <laughs> Just kidding. This is what we actually can use to clean our airbrush system once we have done airbrushed our cookies. Um, Sometimes people aren't comfortable with using alcohol and cleaning. You can use things like water and vinegar as well. Everclear just evaporates really quickly and that's why I find it more useful in cleaning the, the gun as well. I have Q-tips. Um, Q-tips have been the best thing to keep my airbrush guns and system well moving and well clean. Um, so I use this to clean out the drum to make sure I've gotten all the excess airbrush color off the gun so that when I'm ready to use it next time, we are good to go. And then today we have these little peeps that we're gonna be giving dimension. Um, you can buy stencils, you can buy silk screens, but today we're just going to give these cookies a little dimension by giving a little color to the bottom um, to give a little shading to allow those cookies to kind of bounce off the photos and hopefully into the mouths of potential clients. So bear with me as we're going to unbox this together. All right, we are here. We are going to unbox this together. You're opening it with me for the first time as well. We have Sweet Pink Olive. You can find her airbrush system as well as her cookie cutters and stencils on Etsy in her shop. Um, here we go. All right, this is the first time I'm opening it, so we're opening it together. Um, we have our mini instruction manual, which is fantastic because I'm going to reference this as we go. Um, but if you've never airbrushed before, this is something that you want to follow step by step because it will actually really help you and make sure you're doing everything correctly to get that best spray. We have our power cord. Um, this is exactly where you're going to use. If you're from a different area, you can find an adapter for this, but here's the power cord as it comes. This is our hose. Ooh, almost lost it. This is our attachment to here to hold our gun, but here's our hose. This is actually a very nice hose. I have a few airbrush um, systems that I have, and this is actually um, one of the nicer hoses that I've, I've seen. So that'll be nice, and I'm sure it will last us for a while. So we have our hose here. It's got a long length. Um, so if you are working in a kitchen and you have limited outlets, this is going to help you because you can bring the airbrush where you need it to go. Again, this is going to hook and hold our gun to the side of our airbrush system. Um, as you're changing colors, as you're changing cookies, uh, you don't want your airbrush to spill the color out. So this is what's going to hold it um, nicely to this right here. As you know, uh, your airbrush system will have a gun with it. And this is going to be this gun. And it is very, very nice. I just want to be delicate with it. Um, if you've never airbrushed before, the gun is the most finicky part and you want to make sure you're never bending any of the components. Um, because the components are so delicate in these guns, you want to make sure that you're always... Sorry, that cord almost got away. It said not today. <laughs> um, but here's we have this. We have our drum right here. And I think it's going to just be an attachment. Sometimes they're magnetic and sometimes not. I'll have Heather look at that one for me. You have your gun system right here. Um, your nozzle and then this comes apart for cleaning and you can take this all apart when you go to clean um, sometimes I do a real big clean once a month um, but between uses I try to just do the Everclear and go from that and then we have our actual airbrushing system right here um, oh she's and it has her logo on it it feels very nice and you know I've held a lot of airbrush systems and some of them feel pretty cheap um, and pretty 
feel pretty light and flimsy um, and this one is really nice so we're going to learn what the shift the on and off here's where our compressor hooks up to and this is going to be where our gun latches onto right here so that's going to hold our gun when we're ready to go so that is what your system will look like in the next video we'll turn it on and we'll go over some um, some step-by-step -step instruction to make sure your gun and system work for you all right so let's put our system together we have our gun um, we were able to get this off it just slides right on there and that's making it so it doesn't actually spill out any of the color which is fantastic um, we have this hose it's pretty easy you're gonna just turn this until it cannot turn anymore. You wanna make sure you have a tight seal here because this is where the air is going to come out of the gun. If we have a loose connection right here, you're gonna have air coming out of here and you will not have spray out of this gun. That's not what we want. We want a tight seal here so all the air is going up through our gun and getting air and coming out the front. So we have it hooked up here. Now let's hook it up to our system. This is very easy to do. Again, we want a tight seal here so you're going to Continue to put this on until you get that tight seal there. There we go. Okay, cannot turn anymore, so we are good to go on this. We have our power cord, we're ready to go. It's nice and long, which is great, because if you were in my kitchen, I only have a few outlets that aren't being plugged in right now, so I need as much space as I can get. This is gonna go right in the back here and then we are good to go. I'm gonna plug this in and the next video, we will turn it on together. I'm gonna to take it over to our outlet. All right, so we are getting ready to take the first steps into our airbrushing. If you've never airbrushed before, it's actually fairly simple, but there's a few things that you always wanna keep in mind. The nozzle always wants to be pointed straight down. That is why your cup is turned a little bit towards upward so it's never spilling out. But when you airbrush, you wanna make sure you have about two inches between you and the cookie. Um, or whatever you're airbrushing and make sure that this is angled straight down. If it's angled here, you're going to have what we call underspray. Um, things that can help mitigate underspray are things like silk screens and a stencil holder. But since we're not using a stencil today, we wanna make sure that we're angling this straight down. Um, just to start off, we're going to add our airbrush color. And this is the Cookie Countess airbrush color in the color Sunshine Yellow. We're just going to add a little bit. Um, I like to add a little bit as I'm going, um, so I'm not wasting anything. But if you wanted to, you could always unscrew the cap, pour this back into here, and then there is no waste there. Just adding a little bit more airbrush color. What I like to do before I start is, is have a test stripe right here. Um, and that's why I have always somewhere paper towels around so I can always test before I actually do it on the cookie. You'll notice with the sweet pink olive um, machine that it's not constantly having that air compression sound like other um, airbrush systems, but it's actually when you pull this trigger back is when you'll start hearing the air compressor. So it's not that annoying sound 24 seven, which is awesome, but you'll hear it as soon as I pull this back a little bit, you'll see that our air compressor has started. So I'm making sure everything's good to go. We put our lid on here and we are ready to give this dimension. Um, as you know, with anything with dimension, we're just gonna come around down here on the side. Um, this has sprinkles on it, it's sanding sugar, but it still will work with the airbrush system. Some sprinkles you may have to research, make sure you test them before you put um, the color on that. So let's go ahead and start here. There we go, for our first dimension right here. All right, so we have the dimension added to these cookies. It looks fantastic and it's going to sit there and dry. Another thing you want to look for in your airbrush system is that the spray that we have here is very consistent. If you see splatters, um, like paint splatters and your airbrush isn't coming out consistently, there may be an air problem right here and the air is being let out through one of these areas um, or you don't have everything tight or there's a clog somewhere in your system. What we always want is a clean line when we're airbrushing um, because that makes it so our stencils, our airbrush, all those colors look fantastic and we don't have that splatter look. If you are finding out that you have a splatter look, go through the instruction manual and it's going to tell you how to take the system apart, clean it step by step, and then put it back together. Um, and then if you have any issues after that, please reach out to Sweet Peak Olive and they'll take you step by step through the process as well.
And that is a quick how-to on how to set up your Sweet Pink Olive airbrush system. The biggest thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you're cleaning it after every use. Uh, airbrush coloring does dry and you don't want it to dry in your gun or in your machine. So by taking the steps to clean it each and every time is going to help you have this machine for years and years to come. A review from me since I have had so many airbrush machines. This is not the most expensive one I've had, which is fantastic. I actually have a $500 airbrush machine and it's so complicated that I never want to bring it out and use it. Um, usually when I'm thinking about airbrushing, it's the step before these cookies are due and I just want to add a little dimension, a little something special. So this is awesome that I was able to put it together right in front of the camera and get to using it. Um, I love that it doesn't splatter. I have another airbrush machine. It's usually my go-to just because it's quick and easy, but oftentimes I have that annoying splatter and you always, you hate it because you already put it on the cookie, but it's gotta work because you have no time. This right out of the box was awesome to use. I love that it's quieter than the other machines and it doesn't have the compression 24 seven. So ooh, my head is not pounding. Uh, it's an awesome machine. It's got an awesome company behind it. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed showing it to you today.